Be happy to go ahead and get started because we have so much to cover. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is the business reply cards. So some of you guys might have gotten an email. I'll share it on the screen so you guys can see what it looks like. Yeah, my email's over there. Last time, and I know some of you guys did, some of you guys didn't. Uh, we did a business reply card training. It was a little hard to hear and all that, but basically, what it did, um, our partner company is sending little cards that the clients sign off and say, I want additional Medicare information, and then you're able to call them. So they send you directly these leads, they're hot leads, and these clients want additional help with Medicare. So this is what it's going to look like. So it's going to say new BRCDs from Empower Brokerage. And it says CMS approved scope of appointment, lead card script, and then it has your name. So, Georgia, you can download them. And then, yeah. And then it's going to give them to you that way. So, yeah, click on select all because then it does that. Go on the top. Okay. And then hit download. So, then it's going to be in a zip file. So, there you are. So, if you open up the first one, you guys have seen this from the kickoff. It's a generic scope of appointment. So, you guys have those, and it's on the marketing agent portal. So, you don't really have to worry about it on the zip file, but if you ever need it, it is there. The next one is a deep card script, which I have here printed for you guys. So I'll show them to you guys. And tomorrow's training will be covering this as well, so just make sure you guys log in, please. It'll be more detailed because it's straight from the source. So if you see it, it says uh, bank by their name. So Ms. Martinez, the reason I'm calling today is we recently sent in a reply card requesting, and then there's two. So are these are the top 10 Medicare mistakes? So you don't even have to say are the Obamacare. So which discusses how Medicare works and how the 2016 Medicare changes will affect you. So I'm calling to schedule a time to deliver this, that information. Good morning or afternoon work better for you. So, so the year is longer. I'm not sure. I don't even know exactly what changes they're talking about, but we'll just roll with it. And we can read the reply card right now. So these just started shipping, so we haven't had too much info on them, so we're going to work with what we got. So then it says, with morning or afternoon work better for you, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday of next week. Okay, so my name is Saint, and I was up by bank. So of course, you always introduce yourself. So this is something that they sent. You can tweak it to make it your own, but just make sure that you let them know the reason why you're calling. And then it says rebuttals. So I don't remember, I didn't request any information. So it's probably been a while, but that isn't a problem. It was a green card that required your signature and some other information, and I'll be happy to show you the card. This is pretty important information because we are seeing changes from Medicare, as well as some of the insurance company consolidations and doctor and hospital network changes too. And it's important for you to have that information while at that time of the year. And then it says go to. So it has the Little so basically, um, George, if you can show us the next one, so we can see, show them what the needs look like. So, so this is an actual lead, guys. It's like a postcard, and they checked yes, I want information. It literally gives me their name, their address, and their signature. So if at any time they say, I don't remember, that's the card that they're talking about. 
So when you go to their house, say, hey, this is what you presented to me, and this is the information that I have. So what you have to do is there's these flyers. So if you guys want, it's actually a brochure. So if you want to do the trifold, and this is what you have to take to them. So basically that information they asked for the top 10 uh, mistakes, this is it. So let's fold it together. Good question. So like, um, since everybody's getting the leads, right? Um, are we entering the lead somewhere so we can know how many leads we're getting exactly? What I'm thinking we're going to do is like a simple uh, on the cell phone, just lead, enter, and basic info, and send it off. That way we don't use them, like in case we misplace them or something for whatever reason. And I'm going to work with you on that. So it's called Shutting the Light on My Confusion Over Medicare Benefits. If you open it, it literally is everything you guys know part A, part B, part C. There's Medigap, Original Medicare, Medicare Advantage, Prescription Drug Plans, uh, Prescription Drug Plans, other Medicare Health Plans. If you fold it, it also talks about the VA benefits, Federal Employee Retirement Benefits, Military, TRICARE, and then in the back, it's going to have your personalized information. So you guys will be responsible for inputting your name, phone number, and email address, and then you just print them. Okay, this, this will be on the Marketing Agent Portal, and like I said, we're going to be having this training tomorrow. It was scheduled for two, I saw three on my calendar, so I, I will confirm it, I'll send out the text reminder just shortly. But if you guys see, look, it's two. That one's from the top. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's pretty neat. So this is like $1,400 right here. So all you guys have to do is get comfortable and know how to, you know, do the talk without having to do, you know, all the work. So, hey, did you know? So this is going to be good for you guys. So you may probably have to go to their house, but it's just going to be one of those things. Now, if they don't really want to talk about it or they're not comfortable with you speaking at their house, bring them over to the office. Okay? Do you guys have any questions? Is this pretty cool? Very yeah, very cool. right? A lot of so if you guys see, these are all San Benito, because they know my zip codes in San Benito. So like where yours will be Corpus, where it will be Raymondville, Brownsville, San Benito, Edinburgh, San Benito. So if you look at them, they're like super close. This is like down the road. So it's pretty cool. So just make sure you guys get on the train tomorrow. You'll go into more detail, and then of course your attendance will be taken. So these will be able to be, um, I saw you could, but there's other material that you can pass out, like the clarity books. You could probably be able to have the have them just like the card them for this. These or these the cards. Those were sent to us through email. Um, so you have to attend the training, which is tomorrow, uh -huh. and then um, they put you like in a queue, and then they start sending you the leads. So just make sure you, you're present, and that way when your license comes in, you're ready. Because they're only doing them like certain times. We have to like beg for them once you saw how good they were. <laughs> <laughs> so um, make sure you guys on the training. I will put it on the Facebook group. Is everybody on the Facebook group? <coughs> Not, you, Emma. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're on the group. Group. Yes, right. Group. Okay. Awesome. So we'll go over more of this tomorrow. So um, George, you can turn off the whole screen now for now. We are good. All right. So what we're really here for, right? Like, how do I approach a client? How do I do it? I'm super confused. What do I do? So I went ahead and created this enrollment steps, literally step by step. Now there's still a bunch of things in between. So take as many notes as you guys want. Um, we can always edit it to add more things. I'm also going to make it more simple when I can get to it. Where, like, let's say, for example, number one, number two, number three, and I just like more. That way, if you ever get lost in between, you can at least maybe pull it up on your iPad or on a piece of paper and just, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, so we're going to go through this. This is going to take us quite a bit of time, probably an hour. I'm going to try to go through it pretty quickly so we can do some role play. Did you get my laptop? No. 
Yeah, I think they're different, but you're always busy. <laughs> well, I'm trying to make sure you guys make money. So, <laughs> okay. So, the first thing that I would like to cover is a little bit of ethics. Just because things happen, and you know, sometimes when we're in the office, we always say, Man, I'm so busy, I don't have time to do anything. But in reality, how do you expect to make sales if you don't make time, right? So, we got to get better at prioritizing. But also, you know, sometimes we're going to have bad days. Sometimes we're going to, you know, get overwhelmed. And sometimes you can see it in our faces, right? Especially when it's just not a good day. So something that I always tell people, and especially for the people that are out in the kiosk, right, Ruth, we can say this, like, it gets tough sometimes. Nobody comes by. And you just got to have a good face. And, you know, if you might get that last client at the end of the day. You've been there four hours, you get that last client, and you made two to 400 bucks. So it's worth it. So if you guys are in an office, like example, you're gonna be, you know, going back and forth now. Oscar, your first year, completely brand new. So you know it's gonna be a little bit tough at the beginning. So always be approachable. So you know, don't just be on your phone when you guys are at the kiosk. Um, make sure that you guys are smiling. So another thing that you guys will run into is the clients can be super tough. Like the world's against them and the government sucks and they hate Obama and you're like, hey, this is Medicare, this is not that plan. And you just gotta be empathetic and say, you know, I understand, so that goes with number three. I understand it's gonna be okay, I'm here to help you and I'm trying to make it as good as I can, right? So maybe their doctor wasn't in the other plan, somebody did them wrong, um, they switched them plans, so you're gonna be, you know, the good guy and put them on the plan that they need. And with that being said, be patient. Be super patient. Sometimes, you know, they're gonna, like I said, the world against them, and you just gotta be like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And it's kind of just like with any other client, like a tax client or an auto client, and they always say, well, I don't like it, I think this is stupid, and I don't wanna do that, and you know, but they ask for your help. So just be patient, be caring. So I've had clients from, they're super nice, whatever you say, and I've had clients that, hey, I don't even know why you need this, but I want you to tell me. So that'll happen. They're gonna tell you their sad stories. You might wanna cry with them. It's okay if you do. <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, uh, always do the right thing. That's all that I can say. If you cannot make the sale for whatever reason, like let's say um, they're on signal, you know that's the best plan for them. You can't move them to another company because the benefits aren't as rich. You're just gonna have to say, you're gonna have to stay on the plan. But hey, you're gonna have rents, right? So that one experience could make you another know, three to five sales. So sometimes you're just gonna have to say, you know what, you already have what you need, I can't move you. But if for whatever reason you need help later on in the year, here's my card, call me. So that's gonna take me into our Medicare overview. So this will go between whatever, if you're at a kiosk, if you're at your office, if you're out in public, um, we have like buttons that you guys can wear or you know your insurance shirts or you know whatever you're doing on Facebook. So you always introduce yourself and you tell them what you do. So hi, my name is Karen. And oh, and the reason I put it this way is because we've been getting a lot of people saying, what are you selling? Like it's gonna cost them money. So just tell them, I help people understand their healthcare plans and ensure that they're on a plan that fits their needs. So you cannot say you get free plans because you all of them here are zero, right? But you can't say, low to zero premium. Okay, so if you guys want to write that down, as long as you don't say zero off the top of the bat, you can't say we have plans that are very low premium, some are even zero. But don't say Sigma has zero, all will have zero. Just say some plans have very low premium, some even have zero premium. And then the conversation is going to go right however it goes. Um, I couldn't type all that out because there's so many scenarios, but I am working on something like that. But the next step after you introduce yourself is ask the questions to understand what they have and need. So one of the questions you can ask is, do you have part Medicare Part A and B? And then they might say, well, I don't know what I have, but they show you their card. You can do that analyzation for them. So let's say they do have um, Part A and B. Or actually, they don't even know if they, or you can ask them, do you have another plan on top? 
they might say, well, I don't know. So what you can do is ask them, when you go to the doctor, what card do you show them? So you can ask that whenever they come to you, because you're still asking the initial questions. And uh, later on, I'm going to show you a trick. It's pretty neat on how you can know exactly what they currently have. It's pretty sweet. Um, another question you can ask is, is there something you don't like about your current plan? So this would kind of be in the order of your kiosk for the office, because we are getting everybody banners. And of course, we have the kiosk, the Walmart, and the CVS. So they come up to you and say, hey, what do you do? Well, I help people understand their health care needs. OK, do you have Medicare? And they say, yes. Do you have Part A and B? You guys know why we need to ask if they have Part A and B, right? What? Ruth, no, I mean, not you. We need to have an advantage. Okay. Okay. So to offer them any of the uh, two options, we're going to cover two options that they have supplements or advantage. They have to have part A and B. So if they say, oh, I only have part A, that automatically tells you, oh, you need to apply for part B. But remember, when they get their part B effective date, that gives them a special enrollment period. Okay, so don't just say, oh, I can't help them right now because they don't have part A and B. Think of this as a seed you're planning for later on. Okay. So they say, oh, well, I have part A and B. Oh, okay. So do you have another plan right now? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, so when you go to the doctor, what cards do you show them? And they're going to take them up. And actually, and I have some of these if you guys want to take some at the end of the day. They're um, the card holders from AWA. So they're going to take out their little thing because they all have them. So I'm trying to get some freedom ones made. And they're going to take them out and say, this is what I show. OK, so that's your, your part two. So then you're going to see, oh, they have United Healthcare, right? You're not going to say anything like, oh, that's a good plan or that's not a good plan. You just go with it. And you can say, is there something that you don't like about your current plan? Right? So let's say, for example, you're at CBS. And let's say this were Aetna. Well, they're kind of maybe shopping around, right? So it's kind of like when somebody goes for auto insurance, there's something that they really don't like. So you can ask them, is there something that you don't like on your current plan? Oh, well, you know what? My friend gets those things for free sent to them. So what would that be? Over OTC. the counter. Over the counter, OTC. So now you know that's what they're looking for. So you know, um, and I have the plan comparison, uh, United Healthcare does not offer OTC. So you automatically know you can offer the Cigna or the AWA off the top of the back. So then you're going to say, what do you like about your plan? And maybe they say, oh, I really like that I can go to the gym. OK, well, all my plans across the board have that. Right? So then you know, OK, good. So I'll cover a little bit more in detail how you find the plan. So right now, we introduce ourselves. You're going to ask the questions to understand what they have in need. And then you're going to educate them. And sometimes these will merge in together because they may not understand what kind of coverage they have or they're brand new to Medicare. So that takes me to this step right here. These are clarity books. The only problem I have with these is that if you're not going to offer the United Healthcare product and then you show them two brands, they get confused. But this is the easiest way to get your client to understand what Medicare is. So if you guys notice what I did on the second page, and I'm going to see if it's compliant or not. I don't think so. But you see it doesn't have the United Healthcare logo, but it is a United Healthcare information. But in my eyes, it's CMS approved, so it should work. But I kind of manipulated the book, so I don't know. <laughs> so what I'm trying to see is if maybe we can just nominate these and then explain it to the client. I need to get some approval on that. But for now, for today, we're going to use the clarity book. That way everybody understands Medicare a little bit better. So these are CMS. Um, they're compliant, so you can always use these. Like, let's say a client walks up to you and says, hey, I really don't understand Medicare. You can present this to them. And you can present this without a scope of appointment. Okay, so if you guys want to write that down, you don't need a scope of appointment to present this because you're not talking benefits. So this is a really cool book. So one of the lines that I really like using is Medicare is very complicated. And I try to make it as simple as possible. 
So Medicare can be very complicated and I try to make it as simple as possible. And I should add that to the script. <laughs> So you go into your book and say, so I'm just gonna explain a little bit about how Medicare works. I understand it's confusing, so I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible. If you have any questions, you just let me know. So the first page we go into the clarity book are the types of enrollment periods. So this is very important because people will understand the common ground. So the first part says, you know, you're eligible for Medicare when you turn 65 years old, or you got it because um, you went on it on disability. So it doesn't say here, but you should always know you have to be disabled for 24 months. That way you sound like the expert, right? The subject matter expert. So either you got it because you're 65 or you've been disabled for 24 months and you do have to be at least a legal or US uh, citizen. And then we get into the enrollment periods. So we're gonna have initial enrollment period. So this is when you tell them. So when you turn 65, you have your initial enrollment period. It's the three months before, the month of your birthday, and the three months after your birthday. Okay? And then you're going to tell them. And right now, fortunately, though, we are in the annual enrollment period, which started on Monday. Or, you know, it's next Monday. Like, you could go last Monday. That way they can, oh, okay, yeah. It clicked in my head. I saw commercials or something. And then as we get closer in, we can do that. But you can go... Annual enrollment period started October 15th and it runs through December 7th. So you still have some time to shop around for a plan and I can help you do that. Now, something that's gonna be new for the upcoming year is we are getting back the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. That's gonna run through January 1st through March 31st. So basically what this means is you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan right now. Say February comes around, you don't like it, you can change that one time. You're not locked in. So then they're like, oh, you know, you break that common ground that, uh, Sorry, the barrier of entry saying, oh, I don't know if I want to switch or not. Now they know they can switch back. Does that make sense? Cool. And then we're going to go into special enrollment period, which is really good, right, for our Medicaid and Medicare people. So you can go into an example for them because you always want to trigger their mind. They might know somebody in the situation right now. So maybe they, they retired and lost employer coverage. Maybe they moved out of the planned service area. Maybe now they went low income and started receiving Medicaid right, the uh, state assistance. Maybe they've been diagnosed with a certain qualifying disability or chronic condition, or they qualify for extra help. So you see how those are certain time frames that you can get new clients, and you should be telling everybody about this. So this is why I really like this book, because it makes it clear. So if they don't have any questions, awesome. So this is what you currently have, Ms. Martinez. You have this red, white, and blue card. And just so you know, and let's say, for example, they're like, well, I got this new card. It, I don't know what's different. Well, you didn't get a new card because there was something that would happen with identity theft. And it had your social. So now they've made it to a random um, populated number that cannot be identified to you. So at least you're educated in one, right? So that goes into our part A. If you guys go into the script, I put the numbers in there for you. Um, just because it can get a little confusing sometimes. So, we go into part A, you currently have part A, and that's your hospital coverage, right? So you gotta teach them what part A is. And when you go to the hospital and you get admitted, you're gonna have to pay a deductible of $1,340, okay? So write that down, part A, deductible, $1,340. So you go to the doctor for, uh, you go to the hospital for a week, you have to pay $1,340. That's just for the hospital. Now your Part B covers your doctors and specialists and anything in the medical care. So your Part B, you have to pay an annual deductible of $183, and then you have to pay 20%. And there's no limit on this expense. So let me give you an example, and I always use this example because it, it clicks. You go to the doctor, they charge you $100. You're only responsible for 20%, right? And they say yes. So you're only paying $20. That's pretty affordable, right? And make sure they shake their head and say yes. Well, let's say unfortunately something catastrophic happened, you were diagnosed with cancer, or you need a big um, open heart surgery. Well, 
Well, let's say the surgery is $100,000. Now you're responsible for 20%, which is $20,000. Do you think you're in a position to be able to pay $20,000 out of your pocket in case an emergency happens? And they're going to say no. So you say, I completely understand. So that's why I help all my clients have a financial safety net. I give them peace of mind. So write that down. I think I put it in there, but I don't think I put the peace of mind. So what I do is I help my clients understand their health care plan. I provide a financial safety net. And now they have peace of mind because if you stay on traditional Medicare, you will be put in a financial risk liability. The reason you're going to be put in that liability is because there is no roof on how much you will pay a year on your expenses. So I have some options for you that will give you a maximum out of pocket that will tell you how much you're going to pay every year. So that takes me into option one and option two. So I put those in the script for you guys. So I put, I put uh, talking points. You guys can add more notes to that. So Medicare supplements is your first option. Medicare supplements are very good because it gives you um, flexibility. You don't have any restrictions. You can go to any doctor anywhere in the country and you know they're gonna take your plan. However, this plan is premium based, which means you're gonna have to pay a copay for it. These run anywhere between $150 up to $300. One of the requirements for you to get a supplement is that you stay on Part A and B. So, if you get a supplement, you also have to purchase a Part D, which is for the prescription drug plans, which you would have to get with traditional Medicare anyway. And you can always add it right there. We should add that to the script. Part A, B, and then D is optional, right? But nobody tells you about the penalty. So, we have our supplement, premium base, lots of flexibility. Now, I typically recommend this to my clients that are very sick. When they turn 65, they have to accept them into a plan like this. So they know they're covered 100% because the supplement covers all the gaps. It covers the Part A deductible, it covers the Part B deductible, and the 20% coinsurance. However, it can get a little pricey, so it just depends on your needs. Do you travel a lot? No, I don't travel at all. Oh, okay. Well, are you sick? Do you have any uh, reason to think that you know something catastrophic could happen to you? Does any kind of disease run in your family? No, they're all pretty healthy. Just diabetes. Okay. Well, if you want to go into a more affordable option, I can still give you some flexibility. I have what we call Part C. So you see how we transition? They say, I don't want to pay, and I don't travel, so an HMO will work for them. Fortunately, though, we have Aetna, which has a PPO, and it still has that max out of pocket. So I have the Part C. So what Part C is, Ms. Martinez, is it combines your Part A, Part B together, and it combines your Part D over here into one plan. So these are known as Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans. Now, one of the cool things about this plan is that it may offer additional benefits such as vision, dental, transportation, maybe even gym benefits. So based on these two, which one do you think would be best for you? So you don't tell them what's best for them, they're going to tell you. Right? If they cannot afford it, they're going to tell you. So if they want this, they're going to tell you, right? You can say it's managed care. One of the good things is your doctor's going to know what's going on with you and they'll know where to direct you. Some clients are super easy. They don't even care. Whatever you say goes. Some clients will say, well, tell me more. So you, got, you just got to know the plan a little bit. So they say, okay, yeah, let's go with a Part D. Okay, great. So the, let me show you a comparison. And when you guys get really good, you won't even need this. So let me show you a comparison. So with original Medicare, you only get help with the hospital stays, medical care and doctor visits. You get um, assistance with preventative services, but you don't get access to prescription drugs. You don't get vision, you don't get hearing, and you also have no protection against how much you spend a year. Now with a supplement, the only difference between original Medicare and the supplement is you do know how much you're limited to pay. Now on the advantage, which we're about to talk about, you get uh, help with all of that. So you get everything that original Medicare gives you. You're also going to get a prescription drug plan. You get vision, you get hearing, and you also get that financial safety net. How does that sound? And then say, oh, yeah, great. Okay. 
So let me just show you a little bit statistics about our Medicare Advantage fund. You don't have to go through all of them, find the ones you like. So right now there are currently 21.1 million people enrolled in a Medicare Advantage fund as of March 1st of 2018. 90% of them are satisfied with their Medicare Advantage plan and 87% of the seniors are satisfied with preventative care that they receive from the Medicare Advantage funds. And then you can say 31% of them go to the hospital less, 19% of them spend less time in the hospital, and 25% of them spend even less money on the health care. And then you go next. So the only requirements to enroll one of these plans, believe it or not, is just continue to be on Part A and B. You need to live in the service area, which everything in Cameron is a service area, so you're fine. And then the only exception or the only thing is you cannot be, you cannot have been diagnosed with end adrenal disease. A lot of people know this is dialysis. Is this something happening with you? No, I'm fine. Okay, great. Then you qualify for the plan. And then you don't have to go through all of these because you already talked to them about mostly everything. So this is somewhere that you can stop because the next thing that's coming up is the prescription drug coverage. And this is going to be in the enrollment book. Okay. So that's why I'm saying the book's good, but it has a little bit too much info. But it's good that we have step by step by step. But then the last page is all United. So then if you know you don't want United, that's where it's kind of tough. So these first two ones from right here is like that's all you need. Good too. And like I'm saying, really the only real thing you need is page one and two. <laughs> so you guys have them. <laughs> so just get comfortable with knowing how to say it out loud. Um, because what you can do, you can always write on a piece of paper. Right, so you can draw it out for them and it'll make sense. So can we, can we use a cherry book and let's say we're at CBS and we're at Edna? You can't use it. You can't use it. Let's that Photoshop out. <laughs> Edna, why would you have this? <laughs> so yeah, so just get comfortable with reading it. Just know part A deductible is 1340, part B 183 for the deductible and 20% co-insurance. And all that you're doing is looping them around the fact that there is no cap they can go into a million dollars in debt, right? So then you're gonna say, well, now, um, so you go back to your script. So now that you know a little bit about the plan, I'm gonna see which plan is best fit for your needs. So if you don't mind, and that's gonna be going to this local appointment. So if you don't mind, before I can talk any benefits to you, um, CMS does, want me to get permission from you to present a health plan. And the reason we have to do this is because back when Medicare first started, they used to do a lot of illegal things such as knocking on people's doors and then making them switch plans even though it wasn't the best deal for them. And then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. So all you have to do, I kind of summarized the top right. So it says the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services requires agents to document the scope of appointment Scope of marketing appointment prior to any individual sales meeting to ensure understanding of what will be discussed between the agent and the Medicare beneficiary or the authorized representative. All information provided on this form is confidential and should be completed by each person with Medicare and his or her authorized representatives. So you see how I just made it sound a little bit nicer? So once you go through that, so Ms. Martinez, just go ahead and initial what you want to discuss today. So you said you wanted to cover the Medicare Advantage plan, so go ahead and initial right there. Done. And then you go back and you read it. I signed in this form. You are agreeing to a meeting with me. I am a sales agent to discuss the types of products you initialed above. Please note that the person who will be who will discuss the products is either employed or contracted by a Medicare plan. They do not work directly for the federal government. This individual may be also be paid on your enrollment in a plan. Signing this form does not obligate you to enroll in a plan, affect your current or future Medicare enrollment, or automatically enroll you on a plan discussed. So I think this is so ugly, it makes it sound so confusing and scary. So I try to sum it up a little bit. So I make sure I, I cover every single point. So Ms. Martinez, by signing this form, you are agreeing to meet with me and I'm gonna discuss the products and I am not employed or contracted by the federal government. I represent the company that I will be discussing. Now, just so that you know, the company does pay me if you enroll in a plan, but there's no obligation for you to enroll in the plan. Okay, yes. Okay, so Ms. Martinez, go ahead and sign right here and I'll go ahead and date it for you. That's it. You go agent name and then just ask them for their ID when you're doing this and then get their name, make sure their address is up to date and then show method of contact. So the best ones will be walk-ins if they walk into your office. 
Or if you're at an event, just put uh, marketing event DES for Walmart. And then the plan the agent represent during this meeting and the date of appointment completed. So this is a little weird because you don't know what plan you're going to present yet, right? Because you're doing a generic one. So just leave it then for right now. Any questions on the scope? So this is generic for every. Yes. You can use that for any company. Now, what's really cool, let's say the client says, hey, I want you to show me the signal plan. You don't have to worry about this. Just go straight to signal and do the uh, electronic scope. I don't know if you guys have looked into there, but you no longer even have to call them. You can do everything on the computer. The client just has to type their name. It's pretty sweet. So you don't have to keep this. So I highly recommend that Are once you, you figure out. submit these anywhere? We just keep them? You have to submit them okay. to most of them. So what I recommend is if you can do it electronically, once you figure out what plan you're going to put them, fill it out there. Because if not, you have to keep this for 10 years. I don't even know where like my checkbook from two years ago is. So. <laughs> so, quick question. So, let's say, for example, we have the, we have the sales event, mm -hmm. and then we get the leads there. So, we, we send them form the permission contact, right? And they're going to tell you, so at that point, we don't lose the whole appointment? You don't need to. So, when you have a permission to contact, you don't have to fill this out because you can call them at a later time. And it works kind of the same like this. So, your next step, once you have that permission to contact, call them and get the needs analysis. So, this works the same way. So then let's say you get a, a, a carrier that doesn't have an electronic phone. So then what do you do with the scope of the phone? So this one you'll send to the carrier. But what happens you don't get it because you're in the marketing unit? Like, so you do the person to contact, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go home, you call them, and then they meet you next week. So when you meet them next week, we haven't done this because you, did, you only sign the permission to contact. Gotcha. So then you, you do this when you first meet them? Yes. Okay, so then now, what's really cool, remember though, some of them are getting very high tech. So let's say it's Edna or Alwell, mm -hmm. you can text it over to the client and mm -hmm. they can click on it on their phone mm -hmm. and you already have it. So you don't have to worry about it. So when you do the needs analysis, say, hey, uh, Ms. Martinez, I'm going to go ahead and send you a scope of appointment. It's basically what it does, it gives you permission to present the plan. Um, I'm going to go ahead and text it over to you. If you can just read through it and hit accept, that way when we meet next week, we no longer have to worry about doing the plan. So if we send them and they don't do it, does that they still count for the same agreement? No, when I really get to you, just make sure that either maybe they didn't get it on the app and I can show you guys how to do it, you just hit accept. That's all make sure. So it's pretty much done. As long as you have that scope, you're good. That was a great question, Tom. Any other questions? So basically when we're like if we were out there like we this, you know, you would just use the permission to contact the person you can't have these first. You can always have these with you. So let's say you're at a community event offering auto insurance. So it's like the same thing as the permission to contact? Yeah. Kind of. So the permission to contact just means that you can call them at a later time. But if they want to talk right then and there, you can just get this one signed. The reason, the, the Edna one's really cool. So it's a sign-in sheet. So they come up to you and you say, hey, I have this form. It's optional. If you want to go ahead and I can call you at a later time, just go ahead and fill it up. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we do have some AWA ones, guys, for if in case you're like out marketing, they're little notepads that are permission to contact cards for AWA. Just got those. So those will work as well. So basically, if you know any pharmacies or any doctors or any offices that you want to leave them at, the client just fills them up, you go pick them up, and you can call them. And then you'll fill out one of these. And these we submit to the carrier? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to go through a full role play, so that way it makes sense. Oh. Okay, so let's continue. So we have our scope of appointment and they give us permission to talk to them, right? So the next part is knowing what plan to put them on. So we go through our needs analysis. And because we signed the scope, now we can start talking benefits. And we're allowed to ask them for their doctor, medication, um, specialist, etc. Prior to a scope, we can still ask them though, right? You can. You can, yes. It just makes it flow a little bit better. I used to do it first, but now I kind of like the scope better, just in case it's the secret shopper. It just uh, kind of makes me feel a little bit better. Okay, so this is gonna have your agent name. I put this because in case you're in an office and you guys are sharing things, that way you know who it belongs to. Or let's say you're at like the Walmart, we kind of share the bin sometimes, that way we know who it belongs to. So 
put your name, the date. I think the date's important. That way they don't, you know, maybe you get really busy, you forget about them. <laughs> you forget about them, and then you know which ones you need to follow up with that. And like I said, I'm going to work with Dave to put something on the cell block. That way, if for whatever reason you lose it or you leave it at home, you can always follow up with it. So we'll make it pretty simple. So you need the client name, you need the date of birth, their physical and mailing address, and you really don't need all this. If you go back to the script, I put what you absolutely need to have, which is going to be, of course, their name, their phone number, their date of birth, the Part A and B effective dates, their zip code, their Medicare number, their doctor, specialist, and medications. The same number as the Medicare number? Yes, the, the Medicare number. You'll see it. Some say Medicare number, some say Medicare claim number. You'll see them both. So this will take me to what I'm about to show you guys on Medicare.gov. So that's ex absolutely what you need. Let's say you're at a marketing event and they don't feel comfortable giving you their social, you don't need it just yet. So don't worry about it too much. Now you do need to know, and I guess I should have put this here, uh, if they have extra help, the Medicaid, because that'll put them on a separate plan. Right? So I'll go ahead and add that in there. So you fill all this out. So we go through it. So um, address, we need their phone number. And don't be like me. And I filled one of these out at the Walmart. And I just put the name. I guess I was talking to her. And then I filled out the scope of appointment and I never came back to the sheet. So today I was going to follow up. And I didn't put the phone number on here, but I forgot I had in the scope because I mean everything's crazy right now. So I was like, how am I gonna call her? I didn't have anything on here. And then I was like, oh my god, but I remember her last name. I was like, I filled out the scope because I'm gonna visit her. So then I was like, okay, I have a scope somewhere. So don't freak yourself out, just at least put the phone number here. So uh, that email they have some social you don't really need, the claim number you should, you do need their effective dates. And try to get what current plan they're on. So that's the part at the beginning where you say, what do you take to the doctor when you go see the doctor? That's how you'll know what they have. So let's go from where you put the phone number though. In the, in the bottom middle-ish, where it says beneficiary quote. So it's uh, to be completed by agent, okay. your name, phone number, the client's name, their phone number, their address, how they got a hold of you, and then you sign it. Gotcha. Also, you got it here. Yes. So I was like, ah. So. And then you're going to ask them who their primary care physician is. This is something that you can get off their card. It usually has the PCP named on it. You need to figure out if they see any specialists and any medications. So if you go to the script, it kind of divides in two. If they take a lot of medications, you need to go to Medicare.gov. If they don't take a lot of medications, put them on the plan that you think is better for them. So that takes me to... And some of you guys have seen this movie, have not. This is for the valley, you are listening to the marketing agent for them. This is your first time, so there you go, you get your original. You're ready. And so this is for your use, only you are not allowed to show this to the client because you will get in trouble, especially if it's a secret shopper. But basically, it's going to go um, for, uh, vertically by carrier. So you see we have Allwell, Cigna, Aetna, UHC, and Blue Cross. So they kind of were put in order like this for a reason. Allwell, and Erin, you probably know, you get paid for doing the enrollment and you get an additional $50 if you do the value-based enrollment, meaning that they get called and they just make sure that it's a good transition. So it's a great plan, they help with dentures, and you get the extra $50. So your first pick should always be all of Your second choice should be Cigna. And the reason they're kind of second choice, they're almost the same plan, but the superior, uh, the all plan has a bigger network, and they're more tech savvy. If you try to do Cigna and you don't have internet, there's no way you can do it electronically because you need to go on the website. Allwell has an app that you can do offline. So if you don't have internet, you can still enroll them. So you see how that can be kind of like a, oh, uh, which one I put them on? Then we have Edna. Edna's a PPO, so it's like its own little monster. 
right? You can't compare it to Cigna and all well, but it is the first PPO, and the only PPO you, you will offer. And then there's UHC, which is still pretty good, but there's some benefits that went down a lot. So you'll see people drop off of those. Like, for example, if you go to page two, you see Alwell gives $1,000, Cigna gives $1,000, but by the way, the way that they fill the doctors, you get more out of the Alwell dental than the Cigna dental. So they can get more help with their teeth on the Alwell plan. Edna only does $200, and you have to pay for it out of your pocket and then they reimburse you. UHC used to be really good. They dropped to $500 this year. So if your client says, I have a lot of teeth work to get done, you know UHC is not the plan for them. And Blue Cross says <laughs> limited dental and it doesn't even have an amount. So you know they're not the good plan for dental. Does that make sense? So you're gonna start seeing little bits and pieces. You're not gonna learn everything today. You just need to see it. I'm like, you haven't gotten one either, right? It's your first time? Um, yeah. I have one more in color that you can help. So you'll see dental is a big one. So basically, the only difference between all one signal are the bells and whistles, which will be a hearing, dental, vision. Go to the third page. Um, ambulance. OTC, wellness program, which is a gym, and then the meal benefit. So check this out. On the OTC items, all will give them $80 per quarter, so every three months. Cigna, stop doing it. So if your client is used to getting those free items every month, they're not going to get them anywhere. So put them on all well. Edna gives them $25 every month, which is pretty good. UHC went up to $100 every quarter and Blue Cross does not cover it anymore. So you see how that can be a big difference? The wellness program is covered across the board, and they also get the 24-hour nurse hotline. So that's pretty cool. So let's go back up to the first page, and I'm gonna show you something that might trigger your brain to say, well, why would I do all well? All well's max out of pocket is $3,800, and Cygnus is $3,400. So where does that $400 difference come in? Well, one, the OTC, right? They get the OTC, so that already makes them a better plan. If you look at the inpatient hospital, which is three rows down, this is also a big deal because people say, well, if I'm in the hospital, I have to pay $100 per day. On Cigna, I only have to pay $350 per day. So if you balance it out, let's say you stay in the hospital two days, right? They try to get you in and out fast. You stay there for two days, you're only paying $200. On Cigna, you would have paid $350. So you see how that can work? Now, if they're in there for four days, then it did become a little bit more expensive than Cigna because you would have paid $400 instead of $350. So it all just depends. But at least you know the most you'll pay is $800. And that $800 goes towards your max out of pocket, which you know, once you pay that off, you're at 100% covered. Another cool thing is the in and out uh, same day surgery, the military surgical center on all wells 150, Cigna is 200. So you save some money there. So for the, the outpatient hospital, Cigna is better on that part now? Um, see, that's where it gets a little tricky. You see how it says zero? Mm -hmm. It says copay for surgical procedures during collateral screening. Anything else is $200. One. Two. You said outpatient, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. See, now this is where it gets a little tricky. Outpatient hospital is where you go get surgery the same day, but it's still a hospital. You're gonna have military surgical centers, which are like off property off the hospital, and those are a little bit cheaper. So it just depends on the carrier. Some of them are the same, some of them titled it differently. So that takes us into our emergency care. All is only 90, Cigna is 120. And just so you guys know, they're worldwide. All of them are worldwide. The urgent care is $35 on all and Cigna is 25. So it's a $10 difference there, which is not a big deal. 
Now, if the client says, well, I can't really hear and I want my friend has a hearing device. Well, on all well, if it's a specialist, they pay $35. If it's a regular exam, it's zero. On sick it's only a $5 difference, $30 copay. But the big difference is the hearing aid. So on all well, they get it for zero. They can do a upgrade up to $995 and they can get two hearing aids per year. On Cigna, they only get the basic every three years. So you see how that's a big difference if they're looking for hearing? So that's how you would do that one. You went through dental vision. So the Cigna plan is better on the vision. All will $100 allowance every year. Cigna is only $200. I mean, it is $200 every year. If you look at UHC, they get up to $250, but every two years. So you see how that's a big difference? So that's how you guys start analyzing what's best for your client. So once you get the hang of it, maybe your second or third enrollment, you're going to know this off the top of your head. So you won't even need to set one. You're going to know all will get for D, uh, teeth, vision, hearing. Cigna is good for uh, dental. Hearing's okay. Uh, what else would you guys say is good on Cigna? Yeah, the meal benefit, that's completely new. So that'll be, that'll be nice. So the last thing I'll cover on Cigna guys is, let me see where is that. If you guys go back to the front, the diagnostic services, that's an imaging. The biggest thing that makes Cigna different from the rest of the companies is the therapeutic radiological services. So if they're getting radiology for um, cancer, it's only a $30 copay. On most of the other companies, they're responsible for 20%. So it can be a big difference there. But remember that 20% goes to the max out of pocket. So regardless, they'll be covered at 100% at one point. Any questions on any of this? Yeah, but it also depends on which doctor they have. The what? Uh, the, the patient or uh, the customer. Yes. yes. Yeah, because after, after we do this, after we do this, we get the doctors on that, we search which. Uh, and they're waiting to switch it. doctors as well. Yes, that takes me back to that. So I was trying to show you guys if they don't really care about the doctors. So that's for your knowledge. So if we go back to the script, we're going to go. So we have the Medicare, right? We have the Medicare.gov. They have a lot of prescriptions. And if they don't really care, then you go find the plan that's best for them. So I gave you the bells and whistles. So that makes you think what you want to put them on. Right, so you're probably thinking all well Cigna. So I gave you that for your knowledge. Now, yes, you have to come back to the needs analysis and cover their doctors. Remember, that was super required. So you're going to go to the PCP specialist. Always go PCP first. So you go to the marketing agent portal. And everybody has access to the marketing agent portal? I don't think I do. You don't think you do? Okay. Yours will be a little bit different. I don't think you have access to it yet. They have, does Ashley have access to the marketing portal? She should, but I'll try to do it after. Okay. I don't know because she's not on the live side yet. So, or live Oh, okay. No, she's right here. So I can get there. Right. That's what I'm thinking. You want me to bring the marketing in the photo? Yes, we are going to do that right now. Just go with it. So let's write down. Okay, so we're going to write in there Dr. Posada for the PCP. I don't know how I get to it without my bookmark. Did you type more than three? Okay. Okay. So this is the first thing. And maybe Aaron.
Aaron and Ashley, you guys haven't seen this. So George, go back to the homepage. Okay, so this is gonna be the homepage. There's two ways to get access to the Medicare resources. You can go all the way across where it says more, <coughs> hit the little arrow, send you. And then it says Medicare. Or you can go right there where it says welcome, it says portal. And your name should be here. So Ashley, I don't think you're on here just yet. And then Aaron, let's check if he's on there. Barca? Which? Yep, you have access to it. And we just use our freedom login? Yes, that has to be your freedom. Okay. So George, is this what I'm buying for right now? And so you'll see all the lines of business that you do. And I'll cover this just shortly. Oh, you are my mind Um so you're gonna go to more. You reset it. Oh, <laughs> George, I'm um, George. Uh, Karen, yes. I met this lady and she made 300. Thousand? No, 300 uh, enrollment. enrollments. Good. Uh, That's going to be you. <laughs> <We're not coming. laughs> you got to do it. Okay, is that a medical resources, George? And then we are going to click on the, well, we mentally know what we want to offer the client, right? So we're going to say almost like no, maybe UHC or maybe Edna, whatever you want to do. So you click on the carrier's name, and then it takes you to the super cool thing. So you're going to click on provider directory, and then they all were completely different. Basically, you're going to put zip code and name. So you just got to get comfortable. So put uh, 78550. And then this is super important, guys. So right now we're in this transition period where we are still in the 2018 network, but we're shopping the 2019 plan. So for example, that the uh, Dr. Posada does not take all of this yet, but he might take it in 2019. So make sure you always go to the specific plan you're looking for. So 2019 all of Medicare. And the reason we went to that one is because the other one's a dual plan. So they take Medicare, Medicaid, they're on the other network. If they take just Medicare, they're on this network. Okay, so if you guys want to make a note of that, um, Medicare only will never say dual. It'll just say Medicare, HMO. What about just for the entrance to the dual? Click, uh, where it says location, click to update. That's where you came on. It'll show it to you. Right in the middle. There you go. Okay, so we're and then you fill in that work. There you go, sorry. And it's either going to be all will dual or all will Medicare HMO. So if it doesn't say dual, that means it's the Medicare only. And you'll see some of the companies do them a little bit differently. So we're going to go 2019 all well. And then you can do a quick name search. So we're going to look up Posada. Never put doctor, because it already knows it's a doctor. S A T A. And then you search it. And he's in the network. So that's that's good. Now let's go to search again and let's search for a specialist. Uh, search for Dr. Star Hill. S A R H I. Oh, make sure you guys are writing that one. So we have PCP, sorry, not this one. Uh, PCP, Dr. Popala. And then specialist, let's put Dr. Sarno. And just a friendly tip, guys, whenever you guys ask for the name, ask for the first and last name. Because if it's a common name like Dr. Garcia, oh my God, you're never going to find it. And if you want to, also ask for the specialty whenever you're asking for the specialist. Because it might be an oncologist, it could be a Knows you're in throat, you just never know. Just so you can narrow it down. Yeah. And in case you need to search for the name. Because let's say, for example, the client said it was Saril, so they say A S S A R I L L. And then you search for it and you won't find it. So, what you do in that situation, just to double check, you go to Google, so you open a new tab. And on 
how we just put doctor and then I'll type what the client told me, so I'll do S-A-R-I-L-L, -L, and then I'll put oncology. And then put the city. And you see, now you know you gotta spell it differently. So that's a good tip to know for any type, uh, whether it's Medicare or ACA, because we're about to put ACA in the period as well. So let's say that's the only two doctors my client sees. So we know all will be different for them, right? Because we check them off. You go to all will check. Dr. Fargo, all will check. So George, let's go back to the carriers. Can, and can we, is it like on um, ACA where you have to test it like a number? No. Yes. Can we do that right now or do we do that? It depends on the carrier um, because some of them will auto copy it for you. Oh, okay. So if you do it on the apps, you don't even have to worry about looking. Oh. So let's go to Sagna now. And we go, it's built in the same template, so you go to provider directory. And then Sigma is like very old school. So you go PCP, that's good. And then state of residence, Texas. And then it asks for the county, so we're in Henry. And then the market, write this down, we only use WellMed and BOP. Don't search direct and don't start, don't, do not search RPO. We only use WellMed and BOP. So then it said no, that means WellMed or WellMed and Yellow? Possibly, that one or BOP. So they're not in WellMed, they're not in, they won't be in BOP. How so, do you make them go? You have to manually go in. So guys, this is super important on Cigna. If the doctor, let's say Rock Posada is in Wellmed, Dr. Sarko also has to be in Wellmed. If Dr. Sarko is in BOP, he's considered out of network. Okay. So the PCP and all the specialists have to be on the same platform. So they either are in Wellmed or BOP. Some of the doctors will be on both, but not all of them. But if they're only on BOP, then Yeah, so let's say Dr. Posada takes WellMed, or he's in the WellMed network, but Dr. Starfield only takes BOP. So if my client tries to go see Dr. Starfield for, for cancer, right, because oncology, but he gets assigned to the WellMed network, he will not be able to see his doctor, his specialist. Does that make sense? Is anybody confused? I can try to explain it. Okay. So it's okay because it's super important. So the doctors only talk to the doctors and they call them pods. So we have pod one and pod two. Pod one is well met, pod two is BOP. So whatever doctors your client sees has to be all in that same pod, which is either pod one or well met or pod two BOP. If he has doctors, because let's say he's on original Medicare, there's no pods, right? Because it's open. So what will happen is on this carrier, and it's only this carrier, I think. Um, if one doctor is in Wellman in one pod, but the other doctor is in another pod, they don't talk to each other. So they're out of network. The primary one refer them to that specialist. Exactly. So if we have the PCP, then sorry, the specialist. We have to be on the Wellman uh, network. They both have to be the same. Mm -hmm. they, exactly. They, they won't refer to each other. Big. It is big, <laughs> and they really don't teach this. So make sure you guys write this down. Cigna, they have to be on the same network, either on WellMed or BOP. So just make sure, like, if, for example, if you, if you come in like a hospital and start, um, you gotta make sure they're both on WellMed. Uh huh. Or they're both, both on BOP. And if they're not, then they're they're gonna just they're gonna be out of pocket. No, mm -hmm. not network. Exactly. So everybody got it. So. What this means is you gotta shop both networks when you search for the market. So George, let's go to Walmart first. Oh, this is a big deal, guys. On your comparison chart, all well does not work with the Walmart network. So write that down. If your client goes to Walmart, you automatically know they cannot be put on all well, unless you're willing to switch back. Is the customer trust? Yes. It's a big deal because it's kind of like I don't know, people really like the Walmart Clinic for some reason. 
So they'll know. And sometimes if I don't, they won't. So, so if, 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 so that if they're able to implement it, and say, don't go to on, I will go to the implement. Now, there's a difference though. WellMed is its own big pod, it's huge, but some doctors participate in WellMed and other pods. So don't just automatically think that they cannot go on, I will still double check it. Because let's say, for example, Dr. Posada is in the WellMed network, but he also takes, yeah, WellMed uh, network, but he also takes all of them. But if they go to one WellMed clinic, that doesn't count. So for example, it's like, and we have one right here, actually, right by the, the walking here in San Benito. If it's a clinic, they don't accept all of them. But if it's one doctor, they could accept all of them. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So basically, if they only go to a woman clinic, all will not accept them. If they go to a doctor that is part of the woman network, they will take them. Okay. So I know it's a little complicated, just double check, but if they go to a woman clinic, they So most people take women clinic the party say. Yes. And United Healthcare, write this down, United Healthcare is only woman. So it gets a little complicated, but it's good for you to know that way you can at least, you know, know that difference. So UAT is only WellMed, Cygnus, WellMed, and COP. And all well is everything but WellMed. Okay, so okay, so we click WellMed, and this is what happens. So the easiest way to see if the doctor's in network is you go to the last name right there, and you can just search the last name. So if you don't see their last name, they don't take it. So he's right there. And then go to the bottom, and hit search. And then you can go to details, and their provider ID is here. Cigna still does not populate it, if I'm not mistaken. So you will need that number. Mm -hmm. And then you can see all the specialties, I guess. So we have to go back and search for Dr. Sarhill. And it's literally going to make you redo everything again. That's why I don't like Cigna, because they're so old school. <laughs> <laughs> they have such a great chance, we have to offer it. And then you go last name, and you go sorry. So he's not a network, right? With woman. So let's go to BOP. Oh, sorry. It's because we didn't change. Uh, we're still in primary care position. There you go. Specialist. And then you go. Yeah. Camel. Well. Last name. Right there. So if your client wants to go on the Cigna plan, he can. Right? So then you go back over here. You check off Cigna, check off uh, Dr. Sarhill, and go next. So you always want to keep your options open, right? You never just have one plan to present. You never really have two. Keep three. So let's go UHC. And the reason I wouldn't go Edna, and this is like, you would have a conversation, right? They say, I don't need the flexibility. I just want what's going to be the most affordable. So Edna is a little bit more expensive because of all the luxuries, right? You can go anywhere you want. You don't have to ask for referrals. So I would go HMO and go all of Edna UHC. So Georges, go to UHC. Yeah, AARP. Then we go down to three provider directory. And then put the zip code. And then this is also important, right? We go 2019 and we're searching for 2019 plan. And I'll write this down. If it's Medicare only, you shop the complete focus. If they're Medicare, Medicaid, you search the dual complete. And there's like a bunch of them, so that's why it's important. So complete focus, Medicare only, dual complete, Medicare, Medicaid. Maybe, maybe it's gonna be dual, right? See, okay. and dual complete. Okay, 
So George is going to quickly focus. And you guys are going to love the way this one starts. You don't even have to say what kind of doctor it is. You just type in the last name. Alonzo Posada. He's the network. So we go over here. Check. We go back up. We scroll. Dr. Sarza. Done. Check. So now, how do I know which path to present to my client? Because you can't present all three. So what would you guys say you would do? Choose the best one from the three. What makes it the best one? Uh, well, the first one was in my in my in my well, water in my signal. All will signal. Like we didn't do it now. Sorry. All, all will signal. signal. So if you know all the doctors are covered and everything's covered, would you go all will? Would you go signal? All well. All well, right? Everybody. All well. <laughs> all well. Because all the different perks. Your client's going to get amazing benefits, your enrollment. I did one the other day. It took me four and a half minutes once I figured all this mumbo jumbo out. So, and I connected the call. I had time to leave and I got the $50 by having that yet. But I'll get it. Yeah. Okay. But you get you're going to be in the front of the market now, so you're going to get the clients that so like in the next four years, they want to like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Oscar, you have all of them, so you'll be fine. So, just so you guys know, in case you guys run into any clients, all well is not in the rainbow area, so anything will see, they don't take it yet. All right, so then all that we would do is we're going to say, okay, so Ms. Martinez, based on your needs, and I figured out that all your doctors are in network, I'm going to go ahead and present to you the Owl oh, Pack. Owl oh, is a great company. So the, the customer comes in and they're like, let's say they're like, like my grandma, right? Uh -huh. Like my grandma does. She goes like many years, right? So then she's like, no, I want to see the Like, I'm happy now. Like what can we do or say to put um, in there? Because you know, a lot of people do the signal. So what can we do to push the switch? Well, you switch her and then there's OEP. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, I'm not kidding. It says, I will if I could wink, I would wink, but I cannot. I close my eyes. Come on, this is our book, but it's actually great. Well, yeah. the, the, <laughs> big, the biggest selling point on this one, guys, is going to be the Superior Health uh, Care brand. So everybody knows Superior Health Pass because of Medicaid. So just so you guys know, if they have Superior Medicaid and you put them on an all-wool plan, it's the best combination you can put them on. Because if they have Superior Medicaid and then Cigna, they don't coordinate because it's not the same company, but they also don't take over the benefits. You know, they just get Medicaid, they get uh, uh, Cigna. But when you combine them on all-wool and Superior, they talk to each other and it's the best merge you can do. So in that situation, I would say, look, Grandma, there's this plan. It's just as good as Cigna, and this one has over-the-counter benefits. I know you're used to getting those free things through the mail that you would order. Your plan's no longer uh, doing that for you. And if she says, oh, okay, well, then you put her on this plan. And if she says, well, I don't know, well, look, Grandma, what we can do, because it's in here, guys, uh, it is on page... Just so you guys know, this book is freaking awesome. So I feel like for the all of them, it's better on the dental for all of them, right? Yes, they get more out of the thousand dollars. So on page 21, remember, use everything to your advantage. So we're an AP, so you can enroll. Let's say January, February comes around, Grandma, you don't like the plan, I can put you back on Sigma. You now become the agent of record and you start getting commissions on your gamma. Because what will happen is, let's say she says, I want Cigna. You re enroll her in Cigna, you don't get paid for it. All that happens is you become the agent. They don't pay when it's the same company to the same company. Does that make sense? Can so, you repeat the first part? Yeah. So, let's say, for example, George's grandma says, I want to stay on Cigna. So he says, Fine, I'll put you on Cigna. So she sees him do the work. If he puts her on the same plan, he's not going to get paid for it because she's already a client with that company. 
But in reality, if the all will plan works for her, then good. If it doesn't, in OET, put her back on pregnant and you become the agent. And now you start getting paid. Does so that make sense? You, so what happens if you put her? What happens if you put her on um, Edna? Let's say I put her Edna. She's there for two months, and she's like, you know what? It's not happening. Why? Like, okay, put her back to Sigma. So I put her back to Sigma. Is she get paid for? Dude, it's gonna it's gonna look a little weird on your commission statement because um, Sigma pays everything up front, so you would get let's say two hundred twenty two dollars, right, or twenty eight this year. So they're gonna take all of that back, but then you'll get it right back. Where, for example, all will pay you the two twenty eight. And then they're gonna take it back when you take your alpha plan, but then Sigma will give you the remaining part that you're using. So it's the same thing, it's just a wash. But now it's just gonna stay on Sigma forever and you're gonna keep on paying both. Like I said, I would wink, but I can't wink. So <laughs> everybody <laughs> got that. Yeah, everybody wink for me. Everybody got your head in your so does that make sense? So if you guys have your current book of business that says, well, you know what? I really don't want to switch, but you know this is a better plan for them. You're, you can switch them. If they say, I absolutely hate it, switch me or I'm leaving you. Switch them back in January. Cool. All right. So let's go through the book. So uh, Ms. Martinez, this is the book that I'm going to go ahead and show you. This is All Well. They're a great company. They are actually uh, number 61 in the Fortune 500. So they're almost top 10 in the whole country. So. I'm going to go over this book. This is how to make um, Medicare very, very easy. So you open it up. And guys, if you get nervous, all you have to do is read off the page. Because you have to cover every page in the book. So this is just going to be the beginning of making this super easy for you, Ms. Martinez. We're going to make it as simple as possible. So we're going to be covering a few things today, which will be making sure that we did the right choice for you, Medicare 101. Your original parts of Medicare, etc. You don't really have to read everything up. So you're gonna go next, and it's really dummy proof. If you're with an agent or broker, this next part is for them, right? Like you can't miss it. So remember, before you get to the book, guys, if you know you're gonna present the book and you haven't done the scope of appointment, do it on the send really quick, right? Because we jumped back and forth, so it got a little confusing. But if you do the generic scope of appointment, you know you're going to offer all well. You know that all well does the electronic electronic scope. Just do it through your app real quick. That way you don't have to worry about sending the paper to the company later on. So then you fill this out. I mean, you well you fill it out on the send, so you don't have to worry about this. This can stay in the book. Go next. So this is Ms. Martinez, the legal stuff you need to know. Next. So we're just going to go through a few pre enrollment checklists to make sure that everything is a smooth transition. So we're going to go through all the benefits. I'm going to make sure that your doctor's a network, which I already did. We're going to make sure that the pharmacy is what, the one that you want to go to. And just so you, that you understand, if there's a monthly premium, which there is no premium on this plan, I'll discuss it with you right now, you'll have to continue paying it. All the plans may change in 2020, which they change just about every year, Ms. Martinez. So don't worry about it. I'll make sure that you're on the right plan next year. And inception of emergency, this does not cover you out of the network. It is an HMO. Do you have any questions so far? No? Okay. So just so you know, um, and this one, guys, it's a little complicated right now. You have to enter the star ratings because the star ratings didn't come out until October-ish, and these books got here October 1st, let's say, for example. So you have to enter the, the star ratings. So all you do is you just get them from the website and literally stuff them. So just so you know, Ms. Martinez, um, this plan has an overall star rating of 4.5 stars. They go all the way up to five, so this is a very high rated plan. And then you'll go to the bottom, it'll say, uh, the health plan services are rated at a four, the drug uh, plan services are rated at four and a half. So that's how you get the 4.5 overall star rating. Okay, great. Next, bank. Just 4.5. Yeah, and it's like the closest they've ever gotten because they, they were in uh, Sanction Center uh, last year and I think no, a few years ago and they were super low rating, so it's pretty good for them to come that high. So Ms. Martinez, this is how to understand your Medicare basics. And we covered most of this earlier when I discussed how Medicare works and all that, so I'm just going to summarize it for you. So Medicare is a good program, but it doesn't cover all of your expenses. You deserve an affordable plan that meets your specific needs and offers extra benefits to help you stay or get healthy. 
Next. So this is going to be the Medicare 101, which I covered. You have your Medicare Part A and B. It covers your hospital and your medical. There's going to be the optional parts of Medicare, which we're covering today, which is your Part C. And it's going to be the Medicare Advantage, because this is what's going to be right for you. Next. So, like I mentioned earlier, we are in annual enrollment period. It runs through December 7th. So if you know anybody I can help, we have until December 7th to help them. Open enrollment, like I said, what this is, if you don't like the plan that you get put on, you have a one-time change from January 1st through March 31st to make a change. And that's what you'll stay on for the rest of the year. There is initial enrollment period. So if you know anybody that's training 65, they're going to go into their initial enrollment period. Their initial enrollment begins three months before they turn 65, the month they turn 65, and three months after they turn 65. So I have about seven months to help whoever you know. Next. There are also going to be special election periods, meaning if somebody moves out or they move to the valley, that's a special enrollment period, and they can pick a new plan. Let's say they get Medicaid, they can pick a new plan. Let's say, for example, they lose their Medicaid, maybe they forgot to renew it, or maybe they won the lottery, and it does happen. Maybe they go gamble in Vegas, they make too much money, they take their Medicaid away, so they can roll and roll in the new plan. So if you know anybody with any of those situations, you just send them my way. Next. So here's the stuff that you need to know and where to find it. So how to find a doctor, how to find your prescriptions. Don't worry about that because I already did that work for you and it is covered. And I'll show you how I found it. All right. So Ms. Martina, so are you ready to go over the plan benefits? Uh -huh. Okay. So, and it says say hello, right? So it literally says start flipping pages and take in all the all difference. So you don't have to read it. Just <laughs> so this is your summary of benefit. This is covered in the Cameron and Hidalgo County own perspectives. So you're probably asking, this all sounds too good to be true. How much is it going to cost me? Well, today, Ms. Martinez, I want to show you that this plan is not going to cost you anything else than, than you're like paying. It is a zero monthly premium plan. The only requirement is that you keep paying for your Part B, which you already do. It comes out of your Social Security check. Okay. Now, this plan has no deductible. And your max out of pocket on this plan is going to be $3,800. So remember when I explained to you that if you have an open heart surgery or you get diagnosed with something catastrophic, you're going to have to pay 20% indefinitely, which could be, in a case, $20,000. When this um, plan, the most you pay is $3,800. But don't get scared. I'm going to tell you how you get to $3,800. Not a lot of people hit this $3,800. It only happens when they get really sick. So like you mentioned, you're really healthy, so this is more in case of an emergency. So, if you do happen to go to the hospital, it's only going to be $100 per day, days one through eight. If you are in the hospital for longer than eight days, it automatically goes to zero for days nine and beyond. Okay? So, remember, if you had traditional Medicare, which what you currently have, you would pay $1,340. Or $1, so, you're already saving money here. Uh -huh. So, is this, is this the hospital with the... Part B is one where they get the $900 buyback? No, that's only Edna. Edna. And that plan's expensive. So it just depends on the client if they can, are really healthy pretty much. So, okay. So then you're also going to get outpatient hospital coverage. And basically, that same day surgery, you go in and you're out the same day. That will be $150 per week per visit. So that's pretty good. Now, if you need to go to your primary doctor, which you said was Dr. Posada, every time you go to Dr. Posada, he's not going to charge you with zero. Now, if Dr. Posada sends you to Dr. Sarhill, then you're only going to pay $35 instead of 20%. So you're saving money there. Everything preventative is going to be zero. And let's say you're traveling, or maybe you feel really sick and you need to go to the emergency room, you only pay $90. So that's pretty affordable. And if you get admitted into the hospital, you don't have to pay the $90, you just pay the $100 Okay, so you don't have to pay twice. Now, that's you. Thank you. So let's say you're feeling sick, but it's not a life threatening emergency, and you want to go to the urgent care. They're popping up on every corner. You see them all over the place now. Well, if you go to the urgent uh, urgent care, it's only a thirty-five dollar copay per visit. So you would save money by going there instead of the emergency room. So only go to the emergency room if it's life threatening. Now, anything diagnostic services such as lab and imaging, anything with a lab will be zero. Diagnostic tests and procedures will be 50, and outpatient x ray services will be zero. Now, one of the bells and whistles of this plan is you do get access to hearing services. So, if you need to go to a specialist for your ears, it's a $35 copay. 
Now, if you just get a regular hearing exam, it's going to be zero. And you can get a hearing aid for zero. If you get the basic ones, now you can upgrade them and get the fancy one that you can hear all the way across the room. And that one can go up as high as $995. And you get two hearing aids per year. But you don't need them. But in case you ever do, you'll be okay. Now, another bell and whistle is you get access to your dentist or a dentist. I know you said that your tooth was hurting, so I want to let you know that this time we'll cover dental work. If you need to go to a specialist, it's $35. Anything preventative, such as oral exams, cleanings, and x-rays will be zero. And you will get up to $1,000 in benefits. So this plan doesn't say it, guys. They, they didn't print it in there, but just know it's $1,000. Okay, and just so you know, Ms. Martinez, this does cover dentures. So all you have to go is go to your doctor, go get checked, and if you do need them, they'll be able to help you. Okay? Now, I know you said that you were having trouble seeing, so I do want to let you know you're going to have access to the vision. Uh, vision services, if you need to go to a specialist, so your regular optometrist will be zero, but if you need to get referred to a specialist, it's going to be $35. And you get the glasses, you get up to $100, in coverage every calendar year. So what this means is if you want the pretty Michael Kors one and they're 150, you'll just be your someone on school who pays that extra $50. Oh, okay. Now, if you need help with mental health services, this time will cover uh, individual therapy at $35 per visit, group therapy at $30 per week. Now, let's say something were to happen and you needed to go to the skilled nursing facility, days one through 20 will be zero, and then days 21 through 100 will be 170 dollars per day. Now don't get scared. I know it sounds like it can get expensive, but most of the time when you go to these facilities, they try to get you out as soon as possible to get you back home. So most of the clients don't hit the 20 days. Now if you do need physical therapy after you leave, it's only a $35 copay per visit. And let's say you're feeling sick, maybe you feel like you're having a heart attack or something and you can't drive, you're going to have access to the ambulance and it's only going to be a $250 copay per trip. Okay, so you know you have peace of mind knowing that you don't need to drive yourself. Now, let's say one day your car breaks down, you can't get um, to the doctor, or your car breaks for a week, so you know you can't make it to the doctor. You will have access to transportation. It does not cost you anything at zero, and you get 16 one-way trips. So you pick you up at home, and it's really cool. They don't pick you up in those big old vans anymore with a bunch of people. They pick you up individually, and they take you to the doctor. That's one way. Now they'll pick you up from the doctor, take you back home. That's another trip. So now you have two trips. So basically you have eight round trips. Okay. Now you're also going to get access to Medicare Part B drugs. So anything chemotherapy will be 20% co-insurance. So let's say you did get a diagnosis with something that you needed chemotherapy for. You'll only have to pay the 20%. And remember, you do have a maximum amount of pocket on this plan that is $3,800. So if the worst case scenario were to happen, the most you'll pay in a year is $3,800. How does that sound? That's pretty good. Okay, so do you have any questions on any of the health benefits? And at that point, they would have probably already asked, so it's a smooth transition. Okay, Ms. Martinez, so I know you said you take a few drugs and they're mainly generic, so I'll need a uh, look for those right now. But just so you know, preferred generic branding, uh, preferred generics on the Part D is $2. Generic branding drugs will be $12. Preferred branding drugs will be $40. Non-preferred drugs will be 95, and anything that's specialty, maybe they're brand new or they're very expensive, you only pay 33% of it. Now, I do want to tell you, this all -well plan has something different that is a tier six. Tier six are considered maintenance drugs, and those have a zero coping. There's over a thousand prescription drugs on this formulary, and it's basically anything preventative. So if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, some of those medicines will be on there, so they will be zero coping. So, go ahead and let me see your prescriptions, Ms. Martinez. And then you'll go through the prescriptions, right? You'll go to the marketing agent portal, go pull the formulary, and let's say everything's generic. Perfect, and it'll have it on there. We'll do one right now. You go back and you flip the page. And just so you know, these are gonna be the additional benefits. On this plan, you will have over the counter. There is no cost to it, and they give you an $80 allowance per quarter. So what this means is, you know how you go to Walmart and you spend money on uh, cotton swabs, rubbing alcohol, vitamins, neosporin, sunscreen, and then say, yeah, okay. Well, this company is going to give you $80 towards buying all of that. So you're going to be able to save some money every time. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. If you need to go to the chiropractor, it's only a $20 copay per visit. 
You're also going to get access to my medical um, equipment and supplies. It'll be a twenty dollar copay. So if you ever need a wheelchair or oxygen, it's twenty percent. If you ever need something prosthetic like a brace, artificial limb, it's only twenty percent. And anything that I need supplies will be twenty percent. Now remember that twenty percent will count towards your max out of pocket. So you're going to have that financial safety net where you know how much you're going to pay. So you're also going to have access to foot care, so the podiatrist, and that's a thirty five dollar copay. Now one of the cool things about this plan is it has virtual visits. So what this means is you're going to have access to a doctor 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. What this means is maybe you feel like you're coming down with a cold, you don't want to go all the way to the doctor, you can call them and they can give you a prescription. And the last thing is personally one of my favorites, the wellness program. You're going to get access to go to a gym at no cost to you, it's zero. The reason it's zero is because you want to make sure that you get healthy, everybody gets healthy and it's okay if you feel like you don't know what to do at the gym, they have specific classes for you guys, where it's all gonna be the same people on the same time, and they'll be able to um, help you work out. And you'll also get access, like I said, to the 24 hour nurse advice line. You're gonna get access to the supplemental smoking and tobacco. Uh, this is counseling to stop smoking or if you have tobacco use, it's zero. And these are all the benefits that you're going to get with this plan of Do so you have any questions I can help you with? So, everything sounds great. How do I sign up? Okay, great. So all that we need to do is I'm going to need, um, and you already have her Medicare card, maybe, ID, and then you're going to say, I just need to submit the application. It's going to take me less than 10 minutes. You pull out your iPad or your laptop, you plug it in, and then this is a little different because you connect the call. So you have to close them out by saying, okay, so everything's done. Um, everything's going to be good. You're going to get your insurance card. Starting January 1st, you're going to be able to use this time. For right now, keep the same time that you're on. And January 1st, you'll be able to use this one. Now, I am going to have to connect you to Alwa. What they're going to be doing is they're going to give you access to having a smooth transition into their plan. I know right now you're on United Healthcare and you're going to go into a new plan. So they want to make sure that it's smooth. They're just going to ask you simple questions like who your doctor is, um, the last time you went to the doctor, and they're also going to help you set up your first visit through all well. So if, do you have any last minute questions? The reason I ask is because I can't be here when they do the call because of any um, private health. Yes, private. I don't know where anything that's uh, private with your health and it's because of HIPAA, so they don't want me to be here. So before I connect the call, I'm going to have to go ahead and just pack up my things and leave. No questions? No? Okay, well, thank you so much, Ms. Martinez. I really appreciate you. Um, before I leave, I do want to go ahead and give you some business cards because just like I helped you, I can help more people with this. And like I said, we only have to December 7th to make a change. So I'm going to leave you my card. If you know anybody I can help, have them call me. My direct number is on this card, and I can go ahead and give them a call. Well, thank you so much. And by the time you've been with them, you like end up hugging them. And, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get going. I will follow up with you just to make sure everything was smooth. And if you have any questions from here to then, just go ahead and click off. Cool, oh, you're done. So is it pretty simple enough? Mm -hmm. Right? You can't go wrong. The book literally like walks through the Is there in your office? So that's a good question. So the good thing about the Ascend app is you can schedule it for a future date. So they say, oh, well, I'm going to drive in. Sometimes, like, they have just a house one, because I've seen it happen. Um, you can schedule it for, like, tomorrow morning in another house. Now, the cool thing, guys, is if they get scheduled and they never answer, because maybe they don't answer one 800 numbers, you still get paid the $50. It's their job to make sure that they connect to the client somehow. So they'll have to call and call and call and call. So, pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah? You guys feel better? Yes. Cool. Yeah, pretty simple? <laughs> for the yeah. door, book. Yes, it's orange. I have some. So, you guys ready to role play? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven. All right, so let's break into groups of two. And we're going to present this book just so we're comfortable because this is the one we should be presenting anyway. And then I know some of you guys don't have laptops and iPads, so let me go back. Yeah. 
más bien se clarifica. Do we have anybody connected to school? Okay, so this should take us about like 20-30 minutes. We'll be out a little after Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, Are you gonna have it? Just one. Um, yeah. Why not?